Hello, this is David Peacock, and I am returning to the Getty Museum in Los Angeles for the Manet exhibit called Manet and Modern Beauty. Now, Manet exhibits are rare. When I hear there's a Manet exhibit, I jump. I make plans. I saw this on the second day. They don't happen often. Most of his paintings are in great museums, and the ones in private collections don't come out very often, but the Getty Museum is one of the top museums in the world, and they have the clout and the resources and the leverage to, to organize and display the best quality paintings in the world. The exhibit opens with a portrait by Manet's contemporary, his professional friend, Henri Fantin Latour. Fantin Latour painted this, painting the way you're taught in the academies in France how to paint. So the background is brown. It's basically a very uh, brown and black painting. There's a little bit of blue in the tie, but it does show that Manet's uh, levels of society, he was at the top levels of society. His father was a judge and it was a conservative family. So when he went into painting, it was pretty much a shock to his family. I want to focus here on the hands. Uh, the left hand has a glove. The right hand does not. I'm going to be following some other gloves in Manet's paintings. Now the first painting we're going to talk about is this portrait of Jean. This was shown in the Salon of 1882 in France, and it's Manet at his best. It's a great composition. You can see the umbrella on her shoulder and her arm is a V shape and it kind of makes a triangle in the composition. Her face is very pleasantly done and she's a very attractive woman with a, her, it's a beautiful dress she's wearing. The background is uh, developed. And I thought I'd show her a photograph of Jean and put it together with uh, the painting to kind of show this does look like her. It doesn't exactly look like her. There are slight differences. He enhanced the lips and the um, it just goes to show how if Manet paints you, he's going to make you look better. Manet made his subjects look very interesting. Just to return to her elbow here, I kind of got concentrated on her elbow because he did such an amazing job on this arm. It's so realistic, I can feel it. But he had a lot of paint built up there on the dark blue where her um, dress was pushed up. And it just makes it more convincing the body and the head fit together very well. Now we're going to move on to another portrait of a woman. You can see that this is not quite as great as the other one. I pointed out the umbrella on her shoulder and her bent arm that was really well done. This one, her body kind of is uh, hidden there when, because she's wearing dark clothes. So I'm criticizing Manet here, and I want to make a point about how I look at paintings. I'm sharing my individual thoughts about Manet's paintings. I don't work for the Getty. I don't have a PhD. I don't speak with an institutional voice. I speak with my individual voice. Now we move on to another painting, which is a cafe scene, which has been reproduced many times. And you, you see the waitress is looking directly at the viewer. And there's something about the way Manet has his people look out at the viewer that's so realistic. Even though you know it's a painting, you feel a, a connection to that person in the painting. But this one's amazing. I like the worker guy smoking there. And uh, oftentimes when I look at Manet, if you look at it for a while, you're rewarded with something you didn't see the first time you looked at it. And in this case, I see the half uh, portrait of the singer on the stage. So here we are with one of the most famous paintings that, that we see reproduced all the time. And as I f go to museums and look at plates a lot in books, sometimes I see these paintings that are famous and I've seen the images so often in books, I, I come to kind of discount them. But when I saw this, the blue of it is absolutely amazing of the, 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 the water. And I spent some time when I was making this 
film, I spent some time doing color correction, trying to do it right. It's difficult because Manet has the cold blues and then he has the warm flesh. And so you have to balance that. Either it comes out too cold or too warm. And I did spend some time to try to get that as accurate as I could. I think I, it looks pretty good to me, but I don't know what your monitor's like. This man is just has such presence in this boat. He's holding the tiller. Now, one of the things that you notice is that the woman is not quite as well done as the man. And I think what happened there was that Manet was a very um, improvisational painter. And, it, and it, to me, and this is backed up by the, some of the notes in the book, he put in the woman later on. You know, he had the guy there. He looked so amazing, but he needed something else. So he put the woman there. But the one of the telltale signs that she was put in later is there's no real connection between her and him. In a Man A painting, the connections between the viewer and the connections between the people in the painting is often extraordinary and really well felt. So that was a clue to me that, that they weren't really connected, that I thought he, he did that later. Sometimes when I see a painting like this with such majesty, one of the most beautiful things in the entire planet, I think, who am I to criticize Manet? This is a pastel portrait, and I wanted to get your attention toward the hat. Uh, Manet was a very sensitive to women's fashions, and he seemed to like the hats, the clothes, the makeup, the hairstyles. He took such joy in looking at women Here's another cafe scene. You've got the, if you look to the background, you see a singer on the stage. Then you see the waitress drinking her beer. And then the, the man and the woman at the, the counter. But they're all kind of connected and you do feel a sense of place and the community of these people. And I thought I'd do editing experiment here and put the two cafe scenes together to create, enlarge the scene. Now we move on to Manny's wife, Suzanne. And if you want to get into some more depth about his relationships with women, there is lots of material out there, but I'll leave it up to you to explore that subject. And here's a little doggy. I'm sure this will please many of the viewers. A few weeks ago, I was bitten in the ankle by one of these monsters. So this painting frightened me. Now we move on to another portrait of a woman. Now here, Manet's just painting this woman. It's a very simple portrait. And he doesn't have his superpowers where he's creating a super image like the boating image. This is just him, you know, practicing. It's a loose pastel, but it's still formidable. Now we move on to a woman bathing. A couple things about this one. The composition is memorable and it, he's almost creating a symbol to me. He's got his superpower compositional abilities going here. Another thing that I thought of is there's a quote by Degas where he says, when I did the ballet dancers, Manet copied me. Well, here's an example of a woman bathing, and I believe it was done before Degas did women bathing, and it, in my mind, Degas copied Manet. I want to point out the way he did the pastel here. He's very facile with his um, chalk, and on the, t the bottom of the tub, you can see he turned it sideways to do a wide swab to cover the side of the tub. Now, next, we're going to move on to an uh, image of a woman dressed as the opera singer Carmen. Now, this is a salon painting, so he spent a lot more time getting the details and the finish and making it look perfect because this is going to be seen by the thousands of people who visit the salon. 
Uh, one thing I want to point out is the colors are really nice in the original that I'm seeing at the Getty. But when I go to the Philadelphia Museum of Art, where this who owns this painting, this is the image I get down from the internet. It's all dark and dowdy. So I tried to bump it up a little bit in Photoshop and it gets a little better, but it's not, the colors aren't working very well. Uh, but I'm just really disappointed in some of these big museums who hold these paintings and they do a, they do, as it did a terrible job on that uh, image. You just have to be kind of a beginner intermediate in Photoshop to make something look better. I'm really kind of shocked that they didn't make that effort. Now we're moving on to a notable portrait of Manet's great friend from childhood all through his life, Antonin Proust. Manet wrote that he made a special effort to make this a memorable portrait and he succeeded. The stance is so simple, but Manet has a way of making it so believable. He looks so comfortable in his attire. You know, he has his hand on his hip, he's very competent, and he's holding his cane. It's kind of interesting to comparing to the, the first painting I showed by Fontaine Latour, where he had a glove on his left hand, and his right hand did not have a glove. This one is the opposite, where the glove is on the right hand. And I, I kind of think that was kind of a fashionable thing that men did, where they took a glove off one hand for whatever reason, maybe to shake hands with other people, I'll leave that to the fashion historians to figure out. Now let's look at some of the details of the painting that are very well done. Here's another portrait of a woman. I'm not going to say anything. I'll just let you enjoy this. And now we move on to another portrait of Manet's wife, Suzanne. Now this portrait was done much later in his life and when he was close to death from syphilis. His wife is sitting here and you can kind of see a lot about his technique because he fills in the uh, basics of the shapes very well and, and that's one of his strengths. And he, he obviously does the basics first and then he goes in for the details later, which is his own method. And a lot of great artists, they, they have their own method, they have their own way of painting, they have their own way of drawing. And Manet definitely ha had distinct ways of doing everything, especially color. Now, in a previous image, I mentioned how the internet plate from the museum was in poor quality. Another example is this painting, which is in the National Gallery in London, the Tate Gallery. I download the image. It looks like this. And also, the image, that the, Get the Getty book that goes along with this exhibition it seems to have the same image, which is very dark. And it's really disappointing that they printed this image. Hopefully, in a later edition, they can get a better quality image. For example, in this image, the color of her dress is really pink. It looks, you know, it's dark, but it looks kind of like light red. But when I saw it, it's a great, amazing pink. And then you see the blue marks on the dress. It really works well together. So I like this, this painting, but I'm disappointed that and you would not enjoy it from looking at the plate. Okay, so I'm not going to mention any more about these bad museum images, but they're out there. And I really think that uh, it's a valid criticism and this should be fixed. To return to this amazing painting, it's really amazing. You can see he had these big zigzag lines in blue to, on, on the, the, her dress. And it, that's very unusual for him to have that kind of a wide stroke. And um, it shows how he kind of adapts his stroke to the image. But it also might be he was kind of tired. This was toward when he was ill. Now this one, it actually looks kind of like a Degas. 
I don't know who did it first. It's not that big a deal to me, but um, it's interesting that he kind of obsessed a little bit about the outline, which he doesn't usually do. Um, and that's kind of something Degas does. So I don't know how that came about, but that's the one thing that I noticed about this is how he's really going over the outline very uh, several times. So we move on to this uh, painting of a woman with a hat. And I kind of think this is kind of a joke in a way that sometimes, even in today's fashions, a woman will acquire a male uh, fashion attribute, in this case a top hat, and put it on her head. And it's kind of a very confident woman will do it. But you can see the hat's kind of small. It doesn't fit the same way it fits on a man. So I kind of think this is like a fashion, a very high fashion thing to do. And I like the way that the hands and the gloves are just barely done in, but he, it still get the feeling of what's going on. Now we move on to another remarkable Manet painting called The Plum in the National Gallery of Art in the United States. A very nice plate. And one thing I read about this painting, and some people say she's bored. Some people say she's interested. You know, it's amazing. Everybody has a different opinion on her thoughts. But I think she looks interesting. She's what cognizant of what's going on. Sometimes when I look at these cafe paintings too, I imagine there's music going on in the background. So if someone's just sitting there, you know, they're, they're probably listening to music or just enjoying looking around. Now, there is another painting by Degas, and this is done before Manet, of a woman in a cafe. And it's interesting because when I read about it, it's the same model in both paintings. And look at the difference between the two models. I'm not going to tell you what I think. I'm going to leave that up to you. I will say that the model herself said that Degas made her look like an idiot. Okay, next we're going to move on to this lion hunter. I'm not going to pronounce his name. It's too difficult for me, but it is a person who collected Manet paintings and he was a kind of a braggart and he bragged about his lion hunting in the colonies and he was also kind of an amateur painter. Now, I've written down six things wrong with this painting. The first major thing is that He's put a tree trunk on the left-hand side. It readjusts the whole frame of the painting. And if you take it in an art class, they tell you never to put a line right down the side of the painting because it cuts it in half. Well, in this case, in two thirds. Okay, number two is the lion is horribly done. You can't even see the body of the lion. And the thing is, is there's a French painter named Eugene Delacroix who paints lions and he's the best that ever was. And you don't want to compete with Eugene Delacroix. And so he's in a position where he's, he looks like he's trying to hide the lion, but it's really poorly done. Okay, number three, the, fo the forest. There's no foliage in the forest, which he's usually very good at. The figure is kind of floating. It's not firmly on the ground. The colors for a man A, they're just like, it seems like about four shades of colors, which is, he's not using his incredible ability. Uh, what else do I have? The, the, the composition is just kind of awkward and dumb. So why did this happen? This guy wanted a painting of himself and he made man A angry and man A purposely ruined the painting by all these things I've mentioned. That's, you know, maybe he uh, insulted Manet's painting. He's an amateur painter. He could have easily pretended he was much better than he was. And Manet was very conceited about his paintings, like most uh, great painters. So, so for some reason, Manet just ruined this. So let's go to a drawing of the painting. And you can see that he hardly even sketched out the lion. It's just so basic. And... You know, Manet is not known for animal paintings. He has some bulls and some horses and a, a parrot is kind of done, well done in one of his other ones. But he, he always has them as background things and he does, he's not really concentrating on them. That, that uh, drawing was up for auction. The price for the drawing was $386,000.
Here is uh, an excellent pastel portrait. Okay, so here's an example of a painting that you're not going to see very often in museums because it's in a private collection. It was shown in exhibitions in 1905, uh, 1952, 1986, and in 2000-2001. So, so if you don't see it in this Manet exhibit, you probably won't come up again in your lifetime. And here's a painting called Skating, and it refers to the fad of roller skating, which was done by the, where the man in the back is roller skating. Now we move on to this portrait of Monsieur Brune, and I have to tell you, if I drove 100 miles to the Getty just to see this painting, it would have been worthwhile. This is an absolutely amazing painting. This painting has only been shown in an exhibition once in 1945, and that exhibition was in Paris. This is a small painting. It's 21 inches by 14 inches. And he captures this guy and the white clothes he's wearing. You can feel the guy's flesh underneath the white clothes. It's so well done. I was shivering when I looked at it. Now, some people in the audience may not be able to appreciate something unless they know the value of that object. Well, this painting came up for auction at Sotheby's and it sold for $5.4 million. Now, I'll tell you something. I like this painting so much, I would pay $10 million for this painting. Now, this video is turning out to be much longer than I thought, so I'm gonna leave out a lot of some drawings here and some of the paintings, but we're gonna move on to the towards the end where he does the fruits and the flowers. So I'm really running out of superlatives to describe Manet. Looking at a Manet painting is like watching a flying unicorn. I mean, I can't even believe the way he did these peaches. It's absolutely amazing. You can just feel the freshness, the ripeness, the colors. And here's some strawberries. Uh, and then you have some of these plums with, he draws the waxy surface. So when I look at these Manet paintings, I have a physical reaction inside my body, in my solar plexus, in my chakra. I, it, I feel it expand. I feel it warm. I get sensations in my solar plexus, and it just elevates my spirit.
Now we're going to close out with one of the last paintings that Manet did. It's no figures in it. It's just this house. It has a tree in the middle, but it doesn't cut off the whole painting. And Manet is the master of composition, so he may have had a reason to do that. And I'm going to trust his genius on that one. I want to thank everyone for watching this film.